Now, one of the major factors that we've been tracking today is, of course, the falling crude oil prices. Yeah. And they continue to uh, edge lower now, closer towards that $80, $83 per barrel mark. In fact, we're going to dissect that a little further. We've got sure. Sunanda and Agam with us. Sunanda, of course, telling us why this is. And Agam also dissecting a little bit of the impact as well. So, Sunanda, to kickstart with, um, we've seen crude trend lower now for a while. But mm -hmm. what's brought in the latest uh, decline in prices? A couple of factors playing out, Abba, you know, OPEC, of which Saudi Arabia, of course, is one of the largest members, has been losing market share to shale oil producers. That, on the back of, uh, you know, producing too much crude, really, has led to pressure as far as prices go. We've seen, uh, for example, on Monday, Saudi Arabia announcing that it's going to cut prices as far as exports to the US go, but it has increased prices to both Asia and Europe. That playing out on, uh, you know, uh, on Brent prices, hitting those four-year lows on Monday, it has corrected just a bit, but the isn't expected to be too much correction going forward for the simple reason that we're watching out for an OPEC meeting on the 27th okay. of this month. Some clarity as far as production and production cuts uh, uh, are concerned is likely to be taken there. But do remember that, you know, a, uh, and most of the cues and most of the commentary that we've been picking up are indicating that uh, they won't necessarily go ahead and make that cut as far as production goes, but rather keep prices low as they continue to put pressure um, on, on what's really playing out in the US. Exactly. And that's really the story, isn't it? The mm -hmm. fact that uh, in the US itself, and particularly with homegrown producers, they're having and benefited. You've seen, yeah, and you've seen, you know, supply in the US falling as well. Exactly. So we're actually seeing seeing a lot play out when it comes to the US market specifically. Mm. Uh, but stocks, of course, are having yeah, a field definitely. day. In fact, if you talk about the way the stock impact has been playing out, Agam's been tracking that. Agam, take us through who stands to gain and who doesn't with the kind of uh, crack in uh, oil prices. Especially here in India, given that uh, <laughs> given that we're one of the few countries that's massively benefiting from this. Absolutely. Uh, given the fact that uh, most of our imports, uh, or rather majority of our, our imports yeah. consist of oil, mm -hmm. uh, let's consider the OMCs first because they are the direct beneficiaries of lower oil prices. Uh, moving on, there are also petroleum uh, ancillary companies which can also go ahead and beneficiary, benefit from this because of, uh, you know, you have your uh, other oils, uh, uh, when you have like the likes of uh, Castrol and Tidewater. Indirectly, of course, uh, it uh, impacts tire companies because this actually brings down, uh, you know, the impact on um, uh, your synthetic rubber and which will also bring the natural rubber prices down. Moreover, paint companies because that's also, you know, very important in inputs when it comes to petroleum and of course auto companies because that actually means that your anticipated fuel costs will be lower which could actually spur, go, go on spur demand going forward. In terms of adverse impact, well, there aren't really a lot of companies which will have have adverse impacts because um, ONGC and Reliance are hedged against this fall. On the other hand, the only company that could see a little bit of an, a hit is Kane India.